All right, we are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets and a lot of breaking news. Jim, what was your reaction to the Comey firing? Okay, look, I, 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 it doesn't do any good for me to rehash history or where I think it is. Let me just talk about market impact. The fact is, is that, that, that the shenanigans in Washington, we think I have to call it shenanigans at this point, uh, are not directly impacting stocks. I've got a roundtable that I'm doing this morning where I want to go around and say, is it going to be delayed reaction? What does it mean? Because we're so focused on the fundamentals. And that's not a bad idea given the fact that stocks are trading as actual companies and the companies are not threatened by a firing of the FBI director. Uh, I think that if there was a, if the Democrats had any sort of consent, you know, if they were in charge, it would be a totally different world. But you have not seen big Republicans break ranks yet, so I am not counting it as being something that we have to focus on as a stock market. As a citizen, sure, but that's different. All right, and that round table you mentioned is live today at 11 a.m. Eastern, Jim Cramer and a panel of experts. Yeah, and we're going to talk about commodities. We've got a great uh, fixed income. Uh, talk about gold, why that's not moving, and obviously some stocks from, uh, from Sarge on the street. Everyone knows, reads his market recon. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I really like to kick around on that round table because it's very sophisticated, makes some judgments that are not just shooting from the hip. Okay, let's move on to some earnings. We're following Disney. What was your reaction? You know, Disney is, uh, I actually, it was exactly what I expected, which is that you continue to see ESPN erosion. Now the stock had run up to 115, it's coming back down. Uh, I thought that, that Bob Iger laid out a path about what to do with ESPN erosion and what he's going to do. You went over the different uh, 10 poles, the movies that are generating so much money. Uh, I continue to believe that the theme parks are better than ever. So let the stock settle and then you buy it. All right, how about Yelp? Okay, Yelp is it's an interesting call because I felt that uh, Yelp threw so much cold water on itself. They obviously did not sell well. Uh, I don't know whether there's anything algorithmically to, about why they didn't sell well. The newer customers did not re-up. That's very negative news. As the stock falls, people will start speculating, is there a sale going to be involved? Well, it will. Um, the uh, company that bought Angie's List that's part of IAC Interactive, Home Advisor, take a look at them. Would stop them and sell? So I don't think that at this point you sell uh, Yelp. Usually what happens when you're down this much is tomorrow's the day to buy, not today. All right, what was up with Goldman's downgrade of Allergan? Okay, well look, this is a, this was a thoughtful downgrade from the point of view of impact of stock, not thoughtful in terms of the fundamentals. Meaning that it was the stock was just set up to go down. Uh, the stock was trading down yesterday in anticipation that some people would say, you know what, this thing is fully priced. I think that that's really wrong, but I respect the fact that there's so many sellers off the Goldman call. I come back to say, cool scope, which you're going to be hearing a lot about, which is an acquisition that they made, is not in these numbers. That's going to be important. Uh, Brent Saunders, the stock was up more than any other drug stock, so therefore it was vulnerable. Uh, we like it for ActionAlertsPlus.com, and I would be a buyer again tomorrow. When you see a stock down this much today, that means that the sellers probably won't have a chance to finish. They'll finish tomorrow, and that's probably when you want to go in. And you had Brent Saunders on. Yes, and I thought that Brent acquitted himself very well, but you know what? Right now, the street has not liked this since the Pfizer deal. It just hasn't. Since the Pfizer deal fell apart, and it's considered to be a work in progress by Brent, is that a fair way to look at it? I don't ever disagree with the consensus of the street. Let it settle. Tomorrow's a better day. All right, and then on Mad Dash on Squawk in the Street, you talked about NVIDIA. Yeah, NVIDIA is just, I mean, I, I've been defending this company endlessly against the shorts, endlessly against the people who said it's overvalued, endlessly against the people who just said the chart looked bad, just saying the whole time, look, there is no play that is as good on the most important trends, the data center, artificial intelligence, and gaming. It is at the center of all three, and I continue to believe that NVIDIA has got the best management, and it's doing so much right. The conference call is a must-read. It clearly won the night. NVIDIA. All right, and then moving on to retail, there are reports that Abercrombie & Fitch may be putting itself up for sale. What that says is that it's a dangerous short to start shorting the ones that are really terrible, and Abercrombie is terrible. Uh, I think it's an important moment for those who are shorting retail to recognize, well, wait a second, if that could get a bid, I point people toward Matthew Boss's incredible J.P. Morgan piece today, which talks about some factors that people may not be putting in, and a little more positive brick and mortar about weather, uh, about oil and gas, about multinationals and the dollar, and I come back and I say, you know what, for a trade, maybe a Kohl's works, uh, because if you get hung, you still got a 5.74% yield to fall back on. You mentioned Kohl's. We have Kohl's and Macy's reporting earnings on Thursday. Yes, and again, I mean, I think that Kohl's is one of those companies that when it reports, you, know, you buy half position now, buy half position tomorrow. Could Macy's be a, a, something that's good? That Macy's did not guide down last time. Maybe a not guide down is up. Jay, uh, Nordstrom, I think, could surprise, but that's a rental because the second half, I think, is going to be bad. 
Okay, Jim, we're looking forward to trading strategies again today at 11 a.m. Eastern, but we also want to talk about an exclusive event you're holding on May 23rd at your yeah. bar in Brooklyn. Yeah. People yeah. can get a screening of Mad Money. Yeah, and well, it's action alerts. I mean, this is, I think we're going to go over stocks and that I like, and uh, I, I have to tell you, we had a, <laughs> we had a big sank on a mile crowd on Friday, mm -hmm. but what's so much fun about it is, is that this is an intimate, intimate dinner where we close the place down and people really be able to get to spend some quality time. We did one, by the way, with Bob Lang uh, for Trifecta and a lot of people came in from out of town and they had a great time. And I would reiterate that this is one of those things where if you really want to have special time, and yes, it's a Facebook kind of event, true, but it'll also be substantive, Instagram, Snap. This is the opportunity and we're going to do more of these if people come out because I think it's such a great opportunity. All right, and you also get a free copy of Jim's book, Get Rich Carefully, right. and a year subscription to Action Earth Plus. Right, and I think that, you know, look, come one, come all, but I, I would tell you that uh, this is a place that my wife Lisa designed. It is uh, the reason it's got the most tequilas and mezcals <laughs> in Brooklyn. It's in Carroll Gardens. It's, it's right off the F stop for Carroll. And I think that what you end up having is a, a great time. And I'm going to talk about it a lot. Why? Because I want to see you. Mm. I want to see club members. This is a club member event. All right. May 23rd. Jim Kramer, thank you so much. And for more on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.